So for our first one here, there's a couple of ways we could approach it. Um, the way I would normally approach it is going to require we cross multiply. 3 times 56 is 168. And then 4 times 7x is 28x. Okay. So then we have 28x equals 168. And from there, we're going to solve for x by dividing by 28. We get that x equals 6. How many we got 6 for that one? Cool. Anybody not sure where the 6 came from? Wants me to go over it again. Okay. Now this other one here, again, I'm going to cross multiply. 2 times 72 is 144. Then going this way, I'm going to put the 16 first. It'll be 16 times x plus 7. So that 16 times x plus 7 has to equal 144. We're going to have to distribute through the parentheses. 16 times x is 16x. 16 times 7, positive 112, and now it's just solving the equation. We're going to subtract 112 and get that 16x equals 32, and then divide by 16. x equals 2. How many have x equals 2 on that one? Good deal. Anybody not sure where either of those, how either of those worked and want me to go over another example or two of those? Be brave. Now's the time to ask. One more? Sure. Each type or is there? Okay. Now, before I do that, I will show you this, by the way. Um, there is a shortcut to this that we could have done. You could have done 2 times 72 is 144 divided by 16 is 9. Then it's x plus 7 equals 9. And you have to solve for x by subtracting 7. So that's equals 2. Which is a little bit quicker if you can remember that it's not x equals 9, it's x plus 7 equals 9, and you still have to solve that basic equation. Same thing here. 3 times 56 is 168, divided by 4 is 42, so that's 7x equals 42, then you have to divide by 7 to get x equals 6. So let's do another example of each of those. So 2 thirds equals 30 over 15x. So let's just start on that one.
let's take a look at the first one here quick. 3 times 30 is 90. 2 times 15x is 30x. Now, before I do anything more, does everybody see where these numbers are coming from? How we're doing cross products? Okay. So now we know that 90 has to equal 30x. Or 30x equals 90, however you want to write it. It doesn't matter which one you put first. How would we solve it from there? Perfect. Divide by 30. So 3 equals x. Over here, where do we start? Same across multiply. Good. 11 times 88 is 968. And then y plus 5 times 121. I'm going to write it as 121 times y plus 5. So 121 times y plus 5 equals 968. So I can multiply the 121 through, distribute it through 121 times y is 121y. 121 times 5 is 605. Then what? Subtract 605. So 121y equals 363, and divide by 121. Very good. So y equals 3. Does that help? Okay. So moving on from there, there's a few other things I want to review. From two weeks ago, we looked at problems like this. And you were given the command to reduce. How did we reduce that? Well, both 9 and 15 can be divided by 3. Good, so we get 3 fifths. Or we might have had... Fifty-nine over seven, and we're asked to simplify or reduce or convert to a mixed number. Any of those commands would mean the same thing here. So it means we're going to have some sort of sevens left over, but we're going to take out as many whole numbers or whole objects as we can. So it's a division remainder. Fifty-nine divided by seven. Seven goes into fifty-nine how many times? Eight times. 8 times 7 is 56, so there's how many pieces left over? 3. 8 and 3 sevens. So we run into something like this now. I know you love to see the variables come back into it. We start out by separating the numbers. 24 over 16. What can both of those be divided by? Okay, 4 or 8. Let's do 8 since that one's a little bit larger. 24 divided by 8 is 3. 16 divided by 8 is 2. Do I change that into 1 and 1 half? No, because there's the variables there. When I have the variables in there, I can never change it into a mixed number. It'll always stay as a fraction, no matter whether it's improper or not. So my numerical portion is 3 over 2. Now, how do I handle the variables? How do I handle the x? Okay, there's the two things I have to do. I have to figure out whether it's top or bottom, and how do I figure out whether it's going to be on top or bottom? The bigger power is on the bottom, so we know x is going to stay on bottom. And to get the actual power of it is the difference between them. So what's the difference between 5 and 9? 4. So then for the y, there's no power on the y here. So what do I do? 
It's a 1. Very good. So the y is going to go top, and it's going to be a power of 3. So 3y to the third over 2x to the fourth. I want you guys to reduce this one then on your own. So we'll start with the numbers. 75 and 60 can both be reduced by 5 as a start. 75 divided by 5 is 15. 60 divided by 5 is 12. And then we can divide by 3. So 5 over 4. So the numerical portion starts out as 5 over 4. How about the variables? A goes on bottom, bigger power, and it is just A because 3 minus 2 is 1. So A to the 1 is just A. And the B's on top, power of 3. Good. 5 minus 2 is 3. The bigger power was 5, so it goes on top. C stays on top. Perfect. There's nothing to go with the C, so it just stays right where it is. So 5B to the third C over 4A. Any questions? Okay. So another concept that we went over. Oops, is that in the room there or is that coming from outside? That's coming out. Okay, thanks. I was trying to decide whether somebody was trying to ask a question or if it was coming in from the outside. Thank you. Okay, so some of the problems with ITV, I can't see lips move. So no idea who's talking. Um, so anyway, another thing we want to review, another thing we've gone over that we need to be able to do is, you know, we talked about greatest common factors and least common multiples when we were factoring before. LCM, or least common multiple. was the smallest number that was a multiple of both numbers. If I have 6 and 8, their multiples are the numbers that I get from multiplying them by 1, and then 2, and then 3. So 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, excuse me, 6 times 3 is 18, 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times 5 is 30, 6 times 6 is 36. A little dyslexic tonight. 36, 42, 48, 54, and I can keep going. Those are all multiples of 6. For 8, well, 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 6 is 48, and those are all multiples of 8. Well, we can see they have multiples in common. Any number, any whole number, if we keep listing multiples, we'll eventually, any two of them will eventually have multiples in common. In fact, an infinite number of multiples in common. So normally we ask for the least one, the smallest one. So in this case, the smallest one that's in common between 6 and 8 is 24. We had a method using our factoring of finding that least common multiple. 6 factored to 2 times 3. 8 factored to 2 times 2 times 2. Now we could either look at it, one way we could look at it, or one way we did look at it, I should say, is they have a 2 in common, but this one has a 3. This one does not, so we need to put a 3, a factor of 3 in that one. This one has two more twos that the top one does not. So we need two more twos put in there. So 2 times 3 times 2 times 2 is 24. 
2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 24. So we get that least common multiple of 24. Now another way we could have done this that I think is a little easier is we could have listed this out using the, the power method, the exponent method. Instead of 2 times 2 times 2, we could list that as 2 to the third power. Then our least common multiple is going to contain all the factors. There's twos and there's threes. Then the power on each factor is just the larger of the powers between them. This is really 2 to the 1. This is 2 to the 3rd. So this is going to be 2 to the 3rd. Well, this is just 3 or 3 to the 1. And there is no 3 in this one. So just 3 or 3 to the 1. And that is our common multiple. 2 to the 3rd is 8 times 3 is 24. So if we had one a bit more complex, like 12 and 45. First of all, just to give you a little practice, I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to let you guys factor 12 and 45. So the factors of 12 are, anybody? 2 squared times 3, or 2 times 2 times 3. Good. 45? 3 squared times 5. Good. Or 3 times 3 times 5. So now let's list all the factors. What numbers are factors of either the 12 or the 45? There's 2s, there's 3s, and there are 5s. What's the largest power on the 2? squared. Largest power on the 3. So 3 to the 1, but we have 3 squared. So squared. And the 5? Well, it's just 5, or 5 to the 1. So 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. Times 5 is still. So 4 times 9 is 36. Times 5. 180 is the least common multiple of 12 and 45. Of course, you all know me well enough by now to know I'm not going to leave it easy. So I have 12 x squared y to the fifth and 18x to the third y squared. Finding the least common multiple, I am going to ignore the variables for now. And I'm going to factor the 12 and the 18. If I factored 12, I'm going to get 2 times 2 times 3. So 2 squared times 3. Is there anybody who's not getting the factoring to work out right now? Everybody wants to see me do the factor tree? Okay, so 18 is 2 times 3 times 3, or 2 times 3 squared. Now my factors, then this is x squared and y to the fifth. Since I'm using the, the exponents or the powers, I don't need to do anything with the variables. They are factors already. So this is x to the third and y squared. So what do I have for factors? Well, they all have 2s, 3s, x's, and y's. What's the highest power that appears on a 2? 2 squared. Highest power that appears on a 3? Three. 3 squared. On an x? 3rd. And a y? The 5th. So, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, I'm going to combine those to get 36, 4 times 9 is 36, x to the 3rd, y to the 5th. Adding the variables when I'm finding a least common multiple changes nothing. 
36 is the least common multiple of the two numbers. And then for the variables, I just took the highest power of each variable, x to the third, y to the fifth. Let's do another example or two. So 24, A5, B squared, C3. And 50, A to the third, B to the fourth, C. I did the factor tree for 24. I'll get 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So 2 to the third power times 3. If I did the factor tree for 50, I'm going to get 2 times 5 times 5. Or 2 times 5 to the second power. I don't even need to put the variables out here. I can get the variables right out of here when I need them. So for the numbers, what numbers do I have as factors here? 2, 3, and 5. What's the power that's going to have to go on the 2? 3, because 2 to the third is the larger power. How about on the 3? 1, or just 3. There's no power there, because it was just 3 to the 1, or 3. And 5? 2, 5 squared. So now we have 2 to the third power is 8. That's still just a 3. 5 to the second power, or 5 squared, is 25. If we multiply those all up, it is 600. 8 times 3 is 24, times 25 is 600. So that means we have 600 is our number for the variables. A to the 5th, B to the 4th is the larger power, and C to the 3rd. Any questions? Let's have you try one. So for 27x to the fifth, y, z squared, and 12x to the third, y squared, find the least common multiple. Okay. 27 factors to be what? 3 to the 3rd power. Good. 12? 2 squared times 3. Very good. So for the numbers, we have 2's and 3's, obviously. 2 to the power of 2. 3 to the power of 3. So 2 squared is 4. 3 to the 3rd? 27. Multiplies to make 108. So 108 x to the fifth y squared and z squared. Any questions? Just want to do one more? Yes? Okay. Why not? I like that attitude. What the heck, right? So let's do 20 a squared b or a to the fifth b squared c and 
45, A to the third, B to the fourth, D squared. Find the LCM. So 20 factors into 2 squared times 5. 45 factors into 3 squared times 5. So for factors, apparently we have 2, 3, and 5. 2 to the power of 2. 3 to the power of 2. And 5 to the power of 1, or just 5. So 2 squared is 4, 3 squared, 9 and 5 is just 5. That'll multiply up to be 180. So 180, A to the fifth, B to the fourth, that's the bigger power, and <coughs> Yeah, there's no other C, so it's just C, and there's no other D, so it's D squared. What's your name? Easy? Good. That's what we like to hear. Let's find the LCM between three numbers now. So 12 factors into two, two times two times three or two squared times three. Good. Eight factors into two to the third. Yes. And 18. Two times three squared. So it appears we only have twos and threes. Two will be to the third, three to the second. You see it's the same process, it's just now we have to look between three numbers to find the largest power. So two to the third is eight. Three squared, nine. Eight times nine, 72. So the number is 72. We only have one variable, which is x, which is going to be to the first. Wonderful. Now you might be wondering, why am I spending 25 minutes going over least common multiples? Well, because the next step is to start looking at things like this. Two-ninths plus three-eighths. When we're adding or subtracting, we must have the same name. And as you recall, on fractions, the name is the denominator, ninths and eighths in this case. To make them the same name, we're going to use a least common multiple or least common denominator. So between nine and eight, we have to find that least common Multiple, least common denominator. Well, 9 is 3 squared. 8 factors into 2 to the third power, which tells us we have 2s and 3s. It's 2 to the third and 3 squared. In other words, 8 times 9, or 72, is our least common multiple, or least common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite my problem vertically, just because for me, adding and subtracting is more natural vertically. If there's a way you're more comfortable with it, please feel free to use it. My common denominator is going to be 72, so I have to change both of these into 72s. What do I have to do to 9 to turn it into 72? Times 8. I have to do the exact same thing to 2. Remember, whatever we multiply the bottom by, we have to multiply the top by the same thing so that our fraction stays the same value. So 2 times 8 is 16. What do we have to multiply 8 by to turn it into a 72? 9. So again, we do exactly the same thing to the top of the fraction, to the numerator. 3 times 9 is 
27. So now what we have here, the 16 over 72 is exactly the same value as two ninths. The 27 over 72 is exactly the same value as 3 eighths. We've just changed their appearance. And now that they have the same name, we can add. And when we add any numbers, we combine the counts. So that's 16 plus 27, which would be 43. And we keep the same name, 72. So, for one-sixth and three-fourths, I'm going to rewrite it vertically. And I realize for these, some of you can just look at these and tell me what the common denominator is. But let's go through the process. Six factors out to be two times three. Four factors out to be two times two. Yeah, two times two or two to the second power, two squared. So we have two and we have three. Two to the power of two and three to the power of one. So just three. So we have here four times 3 is 12. Our common denominator is going to be 12. What do we multiply the 6 by to turn it into a 12? 2. So I have to do the exact same thing to the numerator. So 1 times 2 is 2. So 1 6 and 2 twelfths have exactly the same value. What do we do to the 4 to turn it into a 12? Times 3. So I'll do the same thing to the 3 in the numerator. 3 times 3 is 9. Again, 3 fourths, 9 twelfths have exactly the same value. Now we can combine the counts. 2 plus 9 is 11 and keep the same name of twelfths. So 11 twelfths. I want you to try to add those two in your notes quick. So if we're going to go through the whole process, and like I said, many of you can look at 8 and 12 and either just know or you can figure out in your head what the common denominator is. And if that's the case, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. Please feel free to do that. I'm going to go through the whole process because in a little while we're going to look at somewhere we might need to do the whole process. So 8, of course, factors into 2 to the third power. 12 is 2 squared times 3. So we have 2 and 3. It's 2 to the third power and just 3. So 2 to the third power is 8 times 3 is 24. So our common denominator is 24. What do you do to the 8 to make it a 24? times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. So you get 9 24 What do you do to the 12 to turn it into a 24? Times 2. So 5 times 2 is 10. And now, adding the counts, 9 plus 10? 19 24 And there we go. It may not always stay quite that simple. We can run into 5 6 plus 3 fourths. And at first glance, it appears to be just fine. Common denominator would be 12. I'm going to skip the long process because we can see that that's a 12. So, what has to happen to the 6 to make it a 12? times 2. So 5 times 2 makes 10. What has to happen to the 4 to make it a 12? Times 3. 
Perfect. So 3 times 3 is 9. So now we're going to add 10 twelfths plus 9 twelfths is 19 twelfths. What's a little off of that? It's improper. It reduces to one whole number, and how many pieces would be left over? If I take 12 out of 19, I'd be left with 7 twelfths. So that is 1 and 7 twelfths. I'm going to have you guys try this one. Seven eighths plus seven twelfths. Give that one a shot. What's the common denominator going to be? 24. Very good. What's this number going to become? 21. Good. 8 times 3 to make 24. 7 times 3 to make 21. How about this one? Yeah, 14. So 2 times 12 makes 24. 7 times, 7 times 2 makes 14. So we add 21 24 plus 14 24 is 35. And of course... 24 comes out of 35 once with how many left over? 11 24. How many of you had 1 and 11 24? Didn't have it 45? That's okay. That's fine. That's perfect. At least you have the process down. That's great. It is about 420 right now. So let's take our break. We'll come back at 430 to start our second half.